Darkness was over the deep, and the Spirit of God hovers over the waters. Centuries before Jesus walked earth, the Spirit was promised so that he might bring justice among the nations. At Pentecost, the Spirit came as a rush of violent wind and tongues of fire. That same Spirit is among us now. Let us worship God. Sigh of relief. 
And that time then that you've given up hope, your grandparent was going to recover this time. God was in the lesson you learned about heaven's timing, and your grandmother got well. Or remember when you felt that your parents would never make up with you? Any of you ever been through that? And God was hiding in the, I'm sorry, please forgive us, note you found under your pillow. Out of the common everyday roads and rooms, the walls and wheels of our needs and lives, Jesus shows us he's here in all things, in the dog barking in the next door neighbor's yard or former man's, in my puppy up on the desk probably waiting right now. Luke is deep into a story full of the active, clamorous uproar building around Christ. Jesus has been busy. It has caused a big stir. And the question on Herod's lips and many others is, who is this man? Then Jesus turns and puts that same question to Peter and the twelve. Who do you say that I am? By now, with the signs of the miracle at Cana and the dove from the cloud, the voice at baptism, this time Peter responds, You are the Christ. It's about a week later, and Jesus takes the inner circle with him and goes up the mountain. Luke tells us he was praying. Jesus was in prayer. Prayer is the reason Luke gives us for Jesus going to the mountain, for Christ to pray, for him to meet God in prayer from the hills where his help comes. And he does. The voice from God is the climax of this story and the reason for this event. Peter, John, and James are so blown away by what happens that they themselves get this. The brothers of thunder... They are humbled into silence. The transfiguration was clearly a mystical experience. Maybe you have seen the look of such spiritual purity on someone's visage, a glow that almost seemed to give off a halo, lifting that face you looked at to exceptional beauty. In every church I've ever served, there have been saints who stirred me to silence, and I just wanted to listen. But here in Christ, we see that perfect matching of sarks and soma, soul and body. That perfect relationship that all other relationships are swallowed up in. The meeting of the divine soul and God. It's a spectral experience. One these men would never forget. And it would give them strength for the trials that lay ahead. And maybe that's a measurement for us for knowing whether any supernatural experience that we do not understand, maybe that is God at work. Well, some summers ago, I set out on vacation. And to members of the church I was serving at the time, members who asked me as to the goal of that trip, that summer vacation, I said, I just have one goal. That's to see an eagle fly. I had something in mind driving me. It was something mysterious, something almost beyond my thinking, but I could feel it. I couldn't rightly tell you then what it was. I couldn't tell you now. But one afternoon, I left the condo I was staying in at Angel Fire, New Mexico, high up in the San Diego de Cristo Mountains. And I drove the nine miles around the green bowl-like valley. That's Eagle Man's Lake right there. I drove the nine miles from the town of Angel Fire down around by Eagle Nest, and I parked the car towards the top of Cimarron Pass. 
and I took the advice of locals who said I could find eagles flying there every evening above the dam. <coughs> I parked the car, I got out, I climbed over the fence. C.S. Ranch is owned by my cousin, so I wasn't too worried. And I hadn't gone more than half a mile, climbing through the ponderosa pines on the sloping hillsides, when I heard the first call of birds. I was still climbing, with the lake and dam now far below me, over 500 feet down past cedars and rock outcroppings. The crevices were tough to surmount because what had originally looked like to me a light, nice, long, gradual hike to the rocky promontory high over the head of the lake. It actually turned out to be a treacherous descent and ascent as minutes turned into an hour. And the ravines turned into steep cliffs separating me from my goal. It's only a few minutes after following the bird calls that all nature went silent. The birds stopped calling, the insects stopped buzzing, and I gave up seeing anything from behind the trees, and then I halted on the trail. A couple of steps past something that my eye had barely caught sight of there on the ground. I turned around, went back, and picked it up. There, perfect in every dark brown line from the quill, was an eagle feather, a lone eagle feather, a real eagle feather on the trail, on the ground. I put it back down because I don't know if you know, but it's a federal law that only indigenous American Indians can hold on to eagle feathers to keep them. I climbed on, finally reached the top, and I sat there. <coughs> Still and long, just gazing out at the view for the miles in front of and below. That's the vista, the actual view. And I sat there just thinking, reflecting, just looking and feeling close to God. And before I knew it, and completely unexpectedly, Something took me by surprise. It came as if out of nowhere. Actually, it was from up above my head and behind, so close, so close I had to duck. So close the sound caused me to both feel and hear the <laughs> of wings. A lone eagle from up behind me zoomed down over my head, fast and straight, across through the purple haze. Down, down, hundreds of feet towards the lake below. And then, as it reached the dam, up, up. Not a single movement in its wings. Still as God's breath. The eagle soared up and fast, straight across, through the heights, over the trees on the mountain, to the other side of the valley, and out of sight. It only took 20 seconds or so for that eagle to melt into the dark purple blue of the gathering dusk. But the eagle flew straight and true and beautiful, and my heart rose up as on the eagle's wings. I felt as if I had touched the face of God. I'm still not sure what God said to me that evening. As the sun set gold and melted crimson over the high Rockies, I don't know if God said, I'm glad you're here. Or, I'm glad you're there in my church. Or maybe God just said, I am with you always. But I do think God spoke. And I believe the Spirit said, I will be with you till the close of the age. Amen.